Have you had cataract surgery, but your vision is still not where you thought it would be? Do you have blurry or foggy vision? Do you still need glasses after surgery? Are you wondering, is it supposed to be like this or am I missing something? Cataract surgery is an amazing procedure that can change your vision and your quality of life forever. But what happens when the outcome is not all sunshine and rainbows? In this video, we'll dive into the top 10 reasons why you might have blurry vision even after cataract surgery. Hi, I'm Dr. Roxanne Lee. I'm a board certified comprehensive ophthalmologist specializing in cataract and refractive surgery. I hope to open your eyes to the world of ophthalmology so you can improve your vision and your eye health. This channel offers practical information and fun behind the scenes views of my job as an ophthalmologist. And if you find any of this helpful, please go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. In this video, we'll be talking about a lot of different causes of blurry vision after cataract surgery. So feel free to take notes and make sure you check out the time codes in the description so that you can keep track of where we're at. The first thing I ask when a patient comes to me talking about blurry vision after they've had cataract surgery is for them to themselves describe what they're experiencing. Meaning, are you having blurry vision or foggy vision or do you really mean glare when you are looking into bright lights when driving at night? Is this blurry foggy vision constant all the time it's the same or does it come and go with sometimes being better than others? Also, what distance is the blurry vision at? Do you notice the blurry vision when you're looking at a distance, meaning driving or watching TV, intermediate like a computer screen, or up close like reading your book or your phone? These are all very important things to tell your surgeon because this will help them to very quickly narrow down the possible causes of blurry vision after cataract surgery because as we're about to see, there are a lot of different causes. The first possible cause of blurry vision after your cataract surgery is actually a little bit of a trick answer. This might actually be the intended visual outcome of your surgery, depending on the kind of lens implant you chose. For example, if you chose a multifocal lens implant, then of course you would expect to have good uncorrected vision, meaning no glasses or contacts, for distance, intermediate, and up close. However, if you chose a monofocal lens implant, remember, monofocal means one focus point, and so you have to pick between those three options. You don't get all distance, intermediate, and near. Of the three, you pick one. And so if you had a distance target, you would expect to have distance vision clear without glasses or contacts, but you would still have blurry vision and need glasses for computer vision like intermediate and reading vision for near vision. This is just how a monofocal lens implant works, and you would expect to have the need for glasses for two of those three visual distances if you've chosen a pure monofocal lens. Furthermore, we need to take into account if you had astigmatism going into your surgery. This is part of your preoperative measurements that are taken before you go to surgery. The kind of astigmatism that we're worried about that might still be there after you've had your cataract taken out is your corneal astigmatism. So the cornea is the front part of your eye and this is the clear window that you look through. But if you have astigmatism, the curvature from one direction is different from the curvature in the other. And if it goes uncorrected, you will have blurring or smudging of the vision after surgery. This is because if you had corneal astigmatism going into the surgery, you will still have corneal astigmatism after surgery unless it was addressed during your cataract surgery with either corneal limbal relaxing incisions or a toric lens implant that addresses the astigmatism from inside. These are some of the many options that you can choose from when you're planning what to do with your cataract surgery journey, but you do need to make these decisions before you actually go to the operating room. If you're interested in learning more about the different kinds of lens implants, astigmatism correction, and surgical options for your cataract surgery, I've made an entire video on lens options and how to think about cataract surgery, so be sure to check it out. I'll link the video in the description. During your first month after cataract surgery, everything is still kind of settling down inside the eye. Surgery causes inflammation, and that is just a natural part of the healing process. 
Think about if you had knee surgery. Right after your knee surgery, that knee is going to feel sore, stiff, and swollen, right? And you wouldn't expect to go for a run on that knee right after surgery because healing takes time. Your body has to go through that same healing process, which also takes time after you have done eye surgery, like cataract surgery. Inflammation takes time to resolve completely, which is why vision is usually a little bit foggy right after cataract surgery. My protocol is to wait about one month after your surgery for both eyes before we call the vision stable and before we evaluate you for an updated glasses prescription. Keep in mind that this healing time may be even longer if you have any other eye pathology that prolongs this healing process. Any pre-existing eye pathology that was there before your surgery may still be there after your surgery, and some of these can really affect your vision after cataract surgery. We'll go into some of these later on in this video. Everyone, everyone has dry eye after surgery. Just think about what happens during your surgery day. So before we even get started, we sterilize the eye with an antiseptic solution of povidone iodine, which is really, really good for killing germs, but it's also really good at irritating the ocular surface and drying things out. Next step, we put an eyelid holder called an eyelid speculum underneath your eyelids so that you don't need to worry about blinking, but that will keep the eye open for the entire duration of your surgery. And even though we try to keep the eye moist with saline eye drops, it can still kind of dry out. During the surgery, we shine a gigantic, bright, warm light on the eye for the whole duration of the surgery so that we can see what we're doing. And then when the surgery is all done, then we also ask you to use eye drops for your post-operative healing. And these drops contain chemicals that are really good for healing, but they can also contribute to dryness. So it's no wonder that dryness is so common after eye surgery, including cataract surgery. As you probably already know, possibly from personal experience, when you have dry eyes, it can affect your vision. It's like when your car windshield really needs new wipers. Sometimes the vision is okay, sometimes it's not, and you might feel sandy, gritty, burning sensation in addition to your fluctuating or foggy vision. To help mitigate these issues, I recommend that all of my patients start using preservative-free artificial tears, one drop in each eye several times per day, starting definitely before surgery, and continuing all the way up until you're a couple months after your surgery for both eyes. The dryness that you experience should be transient, and it will heal much quicker with treatment. A dystrophy describes a condition where part of the body, a tissue or an organ, degenerates or wastes away over time. One of the most common dystrophies of concern related to blurry vision after cataract surgery is called Fuchs dystrophy. Fuchs endothelial corneal dystrophy is a dystrophy that involves the innermost lining of your cornea here, which is called the endothelium. So the cells here that live on the endothelial layer are really important at maintaining clarity of your vision because your cornea has to be the perfect hydration level of 78% water for it to maintain clarity. So if those endothelial cells are struggling or there's not enough of them, like is the case for patients with moderate to severe Fuchs dystrophy, then that cornea can swell if that hydration level goes too high and then it's kind of like you're looking through frosted glass instead of clear glass and that can definitely contribute to foggy vision after surgery. So patients with Fuchs dystrophy have less healthy endothelial cells that are able to clear the cornea after cataract surgery. Everybody after cataract surgery will have a little bit of foggy vision right after surgery, but this usually clears up quite quickly. But patients with Fuchs dystrophy, this process takes much longer. Like I mentioned before, surgery causes inflammation, which takes time to go away completely. But what if that inflammation is not going away even after the normal expected healing time? Prolonged inflammation within the eyeball can be caused by so many different things, and it goes without saying that you should be in very close contact with your ophthalmologist if there is any concern for atypical inflammation that's persistent after your surgery. You always want to look out for infectious causes or even a little chunk of cataract material that might be left inside the eye because this can cause persistent inflammation that doesn't respond normally to your post-operative steroid eye drops. Also, some patients who have a history of autoimmune disease or a history of 
uveitis, which means inflammation in the eye from even before your surgery, can be at risk for having prolonged inflammation after even a normal, typical cataract surgery. And these patients may be at risk for needing a longer course of post-operative anti-inflammatory medication after surgery to keep things in check. Your iris is the colored muscle in the front of the eye that makes your eye look brown, hazel, blue, or green. It sits in front of the cataract lens implant that we put inside the eye during your cataract surgery, and the iris muscle acts kind of like a light filter by controlling how much light hits that lens and the rest of your eye by controlling the size of your pupil. Think of it as a curtain, shading part of a bright sunny window. Now imagine if those curtains had holes in them or were really old and ratty and were thinning out so that you could see light shining through the curtain where you're not normally supposed to see light. This phenomenon can also happen to the curtain within the eye or your iris. If you have iris atrophy where that iris muscle is thinning out and becoming semi-translucent or if you have an irregularly shaped pupil. Some of our lens implants are very sensitive to the amount and direction of the light that enters the eye through the pupil. And if there are issues like iris atrophy or abnormal shape of the pupil, then some patients can develop blur, foggy vision, or glare, depending on the kind of lens implant they've chosen. Iris issues like atrophy and abnormal pupils can be caused by a lot of things like inflammation, eye surgery, trauma, or even can be present from birth. Effective lens position describes the final resting position within the eye of your cataract lens implant as your eye heals after cataract surgery. The position of this lens implant can change moving slightly forward or slightly backward as your lens heals. This is because the capsular bag is bigger than the lens implant itself. To understand this a little bit more fully, we need to go a little deeper into eye anatomy. So when you have not had your cataract surgery yet, you still have your cataract here, and your lens itself is bigger than the lens implant that we replace it with. So look at the thickness of this cataract lens, and then we replace it with this very flat thing that's tinted yellow, and that's the lens implant. You can see we place the implant into a membrane, we call it the capsular bag, and that is clear on this model. But the lens itself is much thinner and it's tinted yellow on this model. Think of the cataract surgery kind of like removing a really old pillow from a pillowcase and then replacing it with a brand new but smaller pillow. Now that pillowcase has more room for that new smaller pillow to kind of wiggle around a little bit. And that's how you can think about the lens that might change position affecting the effective lens position. The good thing about cataract surgery is that your body will heal around that implant and form adhesions to keep it nice and stable. But sometimes the process of forming those adhesions causes the lens implant to shift very slightly forward or very slightly backward. And this is what we refer to as a shift in the effective lens position. Effective lens position cannot be measured before surgery because it, by definition, it doesn't really exist until after you've undergone surgery to take the cataract out and replaced it with the lens implant. The pre-surgical calculations that we use to determine the power of your lens have come so far in the past decades and they're very accurate, but they're not perfect. Even a seemingly tiny amount of movement forward or backward within that lens can cause an impact for your vision. Just like how the lens position can shift forward and backward, affecting the effective lens position, that lens could also shift in other ways, like side to side or rotate in different axes. Let's see how this might affect your vision after surgery. Consider if you had chosen a multifocal lens implant. So that implant has concentric rings like a target built into it. And it's very important that we align that implant so that it's perfectly centered so that your line of sight is looking through the center of the target. If that lens shifts away from side to side so that you're not looking through the center of the target anymore, it can affect your vision and also the depth of field that you get which was the whole point of the multifocal implant. Now consider a toric implant. If you have a lot of astigmatism and we're trying to neutralize or fix that astigmatism with a toric lens implant. A toric lens implant has to be positioned perfectly according to each patient's customized 
axis of astigmatism so that it's rotated in the right degree. So if the lens rotates out of that perfect position after surgery, then you lose some of that astigmatism neutralizing power of the lens. The patient may then notice some blurring or fogging of the vision if they still have some residual astigmatism because that toric lens implant rotated out of place. The good news is that these kinds of lens shifts moving significantly side to side or rotating significantly are very uncommon, especially with the advanced technology of modern day lens implants. But for further prevention, I always recommend my post cataract surgery patients, especially if they've had a multifocal implant or a toric lens implant, to just be really easy on their eyes for the next few days after surgery. That means no eye rubbing, don't touch the eye, don't even use a tissue directly on the eye, wear your eye shield at night, and then don't squeeze your eyes shut even if you put drops in and they sting a little bit. Being super gentle with the eyes can help that lens to stay rock solid in position until those natural adhesions form and make that bond permanent. The most common complication after cataract surgery is a PCO, which stands for posterior capsular opacification. Different research sources vary, but anywhere between 20% and 50% of people who've had cataract surgery may experience a PCO sometime after their cataract surgery. I've seen this happen a few weeks after surgery, and then I've also seen it not occur for decades after surgery. So what is it? A PCO is commonly referred to as a secondary cataract, but it's not actually your cataract growing back. So a PCO is a hazing of the membrane behind your cataract implant due to lens epithelial cells migrating into your line of sight. So I kind of think of these lens epithelial cells like dust that's settling down in a room and they kind of just go where they want to. If those lens cells settle down in the periphery of your vision, you don't see them, they don't really affect your vision, you don't need to do anything about them. But if some of those cells settle right in the center of your vision, it can cause blur and glare with lights at night and so then it may warrant treatment. The good thing is that treatment is very simple. It takes about 30 seconds to do and we can clean it off permanently with a YAG laser. All right, we're finally to the back of the eye. So the back of your eye is where your retina lives. The retina is made up of nerve fibers that coalesce to become your optic nerve that plugs into your brain so that you can see. So goes without saying that the retina is a pretty important part of your eye when it comes to your visual quality. Inflammation after surgery, like cataract surgery, can cause inflammation and swelling in the retina as well. And if you develop this, your ophthalmologist might tell you that you have CME, which stands for cystoid macular edema. This may be completely asymptomatic or it can cause blurring or distortion of your vision. Mild cases of CME can be treated successfully with just topical eye drops, but more significant cases of CME, especially in patients who have other underlying issues like uncontrolled diabetes or other causes of eye inflammation, may need more significant treatment like injections or steroid implants. Another more foreboding issue that can happen to the retina is a retinal detachment. All intraocular surgery, including cataract surgery, carries a risk of retinal issues, including retinal detachment. Some patients may be at higher risk for retinal issues in the perioperative period, especially if you have had a very high nearsighted prescription before surgery or if you've had a history of trauma. Your ophthalmologist should be able to tell you if you are in one of those high risk categories before going into surgery. In the end, there are so many causes of blurry vision after cataract surgery. Some are benign and easily treatable, whereas others are more significant and vision threatening. Make sure you are in close contact with your ophthalmologist if you are having any issues after your surgery. Getting an evaluation quickly can give you both a diagnosis and peace of mind, and you're also arming your ophthalmologist with their best chance to treat whatever they find that you have earlier rather than later. Especially if you have a red eye, painful, sensitive to light, or if you have new flashes or floaters, please don't hesitate to contact your ophthalmologist. I hope this was helpful and I wish you the best in your cataract journey.